because Jesus was born. And it was the first time in human history that the world had something to celebrate. <laughs> the world had nothing to celebrate before that. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father in heaven, for finally giving the world something to celebrate. Amen. Amen. Jesus shines so bright. Jesus shines so bright that we know he's real. We know he's real. He gives everlasting life in a city made out of gold, diamonds, and jewels. And I'm here to tell you, nothing Santa can give you. He even comes close to that. Nothing Santa can give you can top eternal life. Amen. How about a hallelujah? Amen. Hallelujah. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing and the mountains in reply echoing their joyous strains Echoing their joyous strains. sharing with Steve earlier that I've all my life I wished I could have been there that night in Bethlehem and see the skies burst open with hosts of angels praising his name and the star pointing to this babe lying in a stable box and I've always wished Lord I wish I could have seen that and he whispered to me tonight but you're going to see something much greater when I come back so all of us today, we haven't missed anything. We get to see something much, much greater, and it's going to be soon. Amen. Silent night, holy night, all is God loves pure light. Silent night. Holy 
Son of God. Son of God. Love's pure light. Radiant beams from thy holy face. With the dawn of redeeming grace. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Holy night, silent. Father, that night, somehow it just doesn't seem like it must have been a very silent night with this birth taking place and the skies opening with hosts of heaven singing and shepherds coming to see if it was true. And it was true. He was there wrapped in a manger just as you told them. Father, tonight, I pray your peace would descend on this place and on every heart that we might know the only place this world has peace today, and that is at the manger of your son, Jesus Christ, who came to live as a man and die for us. Father, we praise you for Christmas. We praise you that we can celebrate the greatest rescue mission in Earth's history, that you came to save sinners. Father, we bless you and we praise your name tonight and we lift you on high. You know, it's great. I, I mean, I, as we were singing that song, it seems so peaceful in here. <laughs> you know, like the world's out there and all the stuff that's going on, it's so peaceful. The presence of the Lord. Amen. You know, just to be in here Amen. with brothers and sisters in the Lord. Um, this is the last Sunday or the last Saturday night of the, of the year. Yep. <laughs> no, next Saturday night. Next Saturday. <laughs> this weekend will be the last weekend of the year, right? Yeah. So, uh, Scott's back here, and Will and those guys, and they have tithes and offering bags. Um, you know, it, it's year-end giving, last part of the year. So, if you have any tithes and offerings, just put them in the bag as they, as they go down the rows there. Don't feel obligated to put anything in there. We're just glad you're here tonight. Amen. God bless you. But if you have an extra $1,000, put it in the bag. <laughs> you never know. Put it in the bag, okay? And uh, God will multiply it and will bless it. You know, we want to end the year. What is it, in the red or the black? Black. black. The black? In the black. In the black. We want to finish in the black. So, um, Lord, bless us, tithes and offerings. Use it mightily for your honor and your glory, Lord. We thank you for every person here tonight. Thank you for those faithful givers. We have such a great family here. We love you. Lift up these tithes and offerings to you, Lord, that your work would be multiplied. This world needs to hear about Jesus. And as it goes out tonight through the airwaves and tomorrow morning, Lord, a different sermon that we're going to share tomorrow morning. I'm looking forward to that as well. God, whoever comes on Christmas Day, that they would see Jesus shining through us. We ask this in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. 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 Do you have one more? Yep. It's up to you. Go for it. Mm-hmm. 
What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Who may just greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch? Christ, the King, whom shepherd, guard, and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the baby, the Son of Man. So bring him in gold and myrrh, come peasant king to own him, the king of kings, salvation bring, let loving hearts and Nails, nails will pierce him through the cross. Be born for me, for you. Hail, hail the word made flesh, the babe, the son of man. Join me on that chorus. Nails, nails shall pierce him through the cross. Be born for me, for you. Hail, hail the word made flesh, the babe. Nails and spears will pierce him through. Please uh, take out uh, these notes that are on your table there. And there's pens in the back of the chairs if you want to take some notes. Just a few verses that I want to take a look at tonight. But a couple things that uh, we need to just be in prayer about. Uh, first of all, Brandon in the back there. Uh, he's got stage four cancer. He's here tonight. Amen. And uh, God's going to do a miracle in his life. I know he is. And so we're glad that he's here, just joining in the family tonight. And uh, Dan's back there and Scott's back there. If you guys would go over and just lay hands on him. And we want to pray for him tonight. And uh, we, God knows timing of everything. And uh, it was timing that he would even be here tonight, Amen. you know, uh, able to walk here, able to get here. So uh, Dan's over there, and Scott, really loud, can you pray for him tonight? We're praying for you, Brandon. We're with you, man. 
Uh, if you have your Bible, if you have your phone and it's on the, you know, you have the Bible on the phone, turn to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4, verse 10 and 11. And uh, Deanne, wave your, wave your hand. Deanne, wave your hand there. Deanna hasn't been here for two years because of COVID and everything. So this is her first time back in church. All right. Praise God. So 1 John chapter 4, verse 10. And um, Will, can you get Stephanie out of there? Stephanie. She's working. I know she's always working. She she put all the tablecloths on all the tables, all the decorations, all the food she made herself. And you know, she just feels like her gift is being a servant, servant to the body of Christ, servant to Jesus. And so she just loves to serve. Okay, but afterwards we need other people to take the tables down to get ready for tomorrow. So please stick around and help us with that. It'll just take five or ten minutes with everybody helping. And uh, thank you, sweetie, for all that you do. First John chapter 4, verse 10. In this is love. Not that we love God, people trying to reach to God on their own works, that's religion. But he loved us and sent his son to be the offering for our sins. That's Christmas, isn't it? Here is what love is. It is not that we love God, but that he loved us. Tell the person next to you, Jesus loves you. And he sent his son to give his life. That's why he came, not just to leave in a manger, but to die for us on the cross, shed his blood for us, right? And so it says, God sent a sacrifice to take away our sins. That's how much he loves every person here in this room. You know, that much. And so uh, right after that, he says, well, if God loved us that much, then he says we should love one another. That's proof that we love Jesus as we love one another. You know, um, you saw David here. But when my son David, many, many years ago, was four years old, I was so excited at Christmas time because I was going to get him a big railroad with tracks and everything at Christmas. I mean, it was like the best gift ever. I did a lot of research. I checked all the stores. I found the exact railroad and all the tracks and everything. And the train was perfect. Everything was perfect. And I couldn't wait to give it to him. I bought one of the last ones I could find. I was so excited. And so on Christmas morning, I, it was wrapped up in this big box, and I couldn't wait for him to wake up. I wanted to go in his room and shake him and say, wake up! Come and get your present! So finally he woke up, and we were all there and opening up presents, and I couldn't wait to play you know, with him uh, in the, this train and you know, the train tracks. I had it all planned out. And... He was just getting to the age when he was just super a lot of fun. And so, you know, David's almost two now. I can't wait till he's four. I'm going to get him a Christmas track and train. You know, it's going to be wonderful. But I had trouble sleeping on Christmas Eve because I couldn't wait. (laughs) Now, here's this gift. Wonderful gift. Exciting. And he opens up the package, Uh-oh. and he looks inside of it. He ra- unwrapped the box. He looked at it. And then he moved on to the next gift. I was, I was so disappointed. I mean, he really didn't understand what it was. I knew what it was, but he really didn't understand what it was. And I thought we'd play together and, you know, and it would be the dream Christmas present of all time. Amen. You want to get me anything? Get me a, you know, train with tracks and, you know, the whole thing. 
So I was surprised to realize as I opened up the box, there was a tons, tons of pieces that she had to put together. And a lot of the instructions were in Chinese. You know, so it spent, I spent about four hours trying to put this thing together. Scott would have probably put it together in an hour. But, you know, it just took me a whole long time. Bummer. The perfect gift idea for my son failed. I should have opened up the package way in advance and set it all up and maybe show a visit video of how much fun it is and the whole thing. But I was thinking about that illustration from so long ago, and I was thinking God gave us the perfect gift. The perfect gift. The greatest gift of all time. And God doesn't disappoint us. 2,000 years ago, he sent his son. And uh, turn in your Bibles to the book of James, chapter 1. Right after the book of Hebrews, James, chapter 1, verse 7. Ask in faith without any doubting, for the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For, not, for let not the man expect that he will receive anything from the Lord. Don't be a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. And there's a lot of double-minded people out there, aren't there? Unstable in all of their ways. And then it says later on that every good thing, verse 17, bestowed and every perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. You know, that perfect gift was when God sent his son. In uh, 2 Corinthians 9.15 it says, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. His perfect gift. Indescribable. What does the word Emmanuel mean? You see it all the time. What does it mean? God is with us. Tell the person next to you, God is with you. Now, he may be speaking to some of hearts here tonight that Hey, you're in rebellion to God. You're, you know, you're living in sin, whatever it may be, and you need to ask God's forgiveness and healing in your life. And God says that he will do that. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us. Amen. Do we need forgiveness tonight? John 3:16. You all know it. For God so loved what? That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Anybody here want everlasting life? Man, it's going to be a million times better than anything on this earth. But even on this earth, Jesus said, I came that you might have life and life more abundantly. So salvation by grace through faith in Jesus alone. That is the greatest perfect gift that keeps on giving for eternity. In John, turn to John chapter 1, verse 14. John chapter 1, verse 14. Here's Christmas, right in the book of John, verse 14, right in the first chapter. He says, and the word, the Logos, became flesh. That's Christmas. The Logos became flesh, and he dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. You know, Jesus has to explain God because he was God in human flesh. And that perfect gift costs you nothing. It doesn't cost you anything. God says it's a free gift. You can't buy it. All the money in the world, man, some of the richest people in the world, they can't buy salvation. It's a free gift. You know, 
Uh, it's so sad that Jesus came to his own, and it says his own received him not. And so many people today, Christmas Eve, have rejected Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. He offered us his son. He offered us forgiveness of sins, and he says it's free. If I had $1,000 up here, how many would like $1,000? Some of you are liars. Your hands aren't raised. But it would be a free gift if you really wanted it. And so you did not have to pay for it. Jesus bought you by what he did for us on the cross. He came to the earth to die, to bear all of our sins, the sins of the world, and you accept it by faith. Accept it by faith. You know, um, I was thinking about the biblical story in the book of Luke. You've all heard it and read it about Jesus' birth. And I was thinking about the Magi. First of all, the song, We Three Kings of Orient and Art, we don't know if that's true because we don't know how many kings there were that came. We, it never, never says in the scriptures, but there was three gifts that were offered. What were they? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh, right. Very expensive. They traveled a long distance to get where Jesus was. They had the great expense of their time, their resources. It was a dangerous journey. There were a lot of thieves on the way, and they were carrying some very expensive items. It is estimated that um, it probably took between a month to three months to get to where Jesus was and back home again. That's a long time to be away from your family and your home. So it was costly to them. Um, I can't even imagine hundreds of miles riding on camels. Anybody here ever ride on a camel? You did? Where did you ride on a camel? In Egypt, okay. Oh, the zoo. You actually rode on a camel to the zoo? All right. You had to pay to get on there? Yeah. So I was in Jerusalem many, many years ago, and there was a, a group of people there that were had a sign that said camel rides and you could ride on a camel you know and it was probably a five minute ride or ten minute ride but i was going up and down up and down up and down and i was holding on for dear life <laughs> i i can't even imagine hundreds of miles you know riding on the king on the camel but think about this they were bringing gifts to an obscure foreign king who had no country, no land, had no influence, and they did it all because of a sign that was in the sky that led them to Jesus and some Old Testament verses that talked about the birth of the Savior. So they left their homes to come to where Jesus was. And we can marvel at the extravagance of the gift, but they were coming to a humble Messiah, a humble Savior, with commitment and dedication. And that's what Jesus wants us to come to him. Simple obedience, simple dedication, simple trust. You know, what about his followers? Think about their times. It was costly to follow Jesus in their times. What was the job of Matthew? Anybody remember? Tax. Tax collector. He walked away from it. Probably very lucrative type of job because they took advantage of the people. And, and he walked away from it. What about, what was uh, John's uh, profession? Fishermen. Remember? Peter, James, and John. They left their fishing jobs that they had, probably doing pretty good at it, to follow Jesus. And uh, there's another guy that God gives us in the scriptures, a rich young ruler. Isn't there a guy kind of in the news today that had billions of dollars that he squandered away? 
and other people's money away, supported some political people with a lot of money. And Jesus, this rich young ruler, came to Jesus, and he says, well, I've done all these things. I, I was, did this, and I did this, and I did this. You know, aren't I good? <laughs> and Jesus said, one thing you need to do, go and do what? Sell everything and come and follow me. Now, the love of riches can really get a hold of a lot of people. And it says he went away sorrowful. He went away. And uh, he went away broken. He went away, it says, sad. Turn to uh, Matthew chapter 16, and we'll just uh, close with this and one other verse. Matthew chapter 16. Verse 24, then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life shall use, lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake shall find it. For what will it profit a man be profited if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? See, Satan's there, and he offers you this, and he offers you that. You know, you can have this. You can have this thing. You know, and they forfeit their souls. You can see it everywhere. Um, God's grace is free. You can't buy it. You can't earn it. You can't offer enough sacrifice. You can't give enough money to people or organizations. It's free. But people still today reject their Savior, their Lord. Hundreds of prophecies written hundreds of years before Jesus came all came to pass. Over 300 of them. What does that prove? It proves that Jesus is who he says he is. You can look at the biblical accounts, which we'll take a look at a little bit more tomorrow. So Luke 9.23, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. It says, not as I will, but as he wills. My son didn't enjoy that train set nearly as much as I hope he would. Even after I set it all up, even after I got it all working, this is what I realized. I realized my gift was more about me <laughs> and what I had wanted as a child than about him. Now, Jesus says, I want to give you abundant life. I want to give you joy, peace. A peace that passes all understanding. I want to give you eternal life. And he says it's free. He wants us to know and experience him. You can know and experience him tonight. He says in the last days there will be a lot of mockers, a lot of scoffers, a lot of people in rebellion against God. And Jesus is reaching right out to all of them. He says, I'm here. I'm here. I love you so much. I left my throne in glory in heaven to come down as a baby to die on a cross for your sins as a, an atonement, as a sacrifice for your sins. And uh, the greatest gift, the most perfect gift, is coming to Jesus. You know... A lot of you have family and stuff visiting, and uh, <clears throat> you know uh, you're going to make phone calls, you're going to send letters, all kinds of things. But I would say the most important thing is that you, first of all, come to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Exactly right. That you know tonight 
that your names are written in God's book of life for eternity. Even John, through the whole Gospel of John, he says, I wrote these things so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that in believing, you may have eternal life. I'd like you to just bow your heads and close your eyes and Jesus is the only reason for our season here. Only reason for Christmas. The gifts are okay. As long as you don't give your four-year-old son a train set. <laughs> but, you know, the, the, the time around family is okay. It's fun. But if you don't know Jesus, it means nothing. You have, or you can receive the perfect and greatest gift ever, salvation through Jesus. And as our heads are bowed tonight, if you've been in rebellion, you've been walking away from God, you're like the prodigal son, the prodigal daughter. <clears throat> and after he, the prodigal son had lost everything, he said, he, and he was feeding the pigs. He said, my father's servants are treated so much better than I am. I'm going to go back and ask for his forgiveness. And the father saw his prodigal son coming. And he said, kill the calf. We're going to have a party. My son that was lost has come home. You may be lost tonight. And Jesus is calling you home. Thank you, Jesus. His arms are open wide. The presence of the Lord. He doesn't want to condemn you. He, he doesn't want you, you know, to feel guilt or any of those things. He offers you forgiveness and healing and offers you hope. And so tonight, if you need a change in your life, you need to come home to Jesus. You need to repent of your sins and come and follow Jesus. He'll be right there with you. Emmanuel, God with us. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Come home to Jesus. And if you want to ask God's forgiveness for things in your life, you want to receive into your life, just raise your hand right now. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you. Many people in this room. Anybody else before we close this service? God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy grace, thy salvation, so, so rich so free. and so free. Thank you, Jesus. Let's all stand. There's a little candle in front of you. Turn off the lights over there, Rick. <clears throat> this little light of mine. I'm going to what? We're going to let it shine this year. Jesus is the light of the world. Light those candles. We're going to let our light shine for Jesus tonight. He is the light of the world. He says, we are to be little light shining for him. Everybody got those candles lit? <laughs> Hold them high. What does it say? Don't let Satan do what? Don't let him blow it out. I'm going to let my light shine. Let's sing this song as we just have all these candles lit for Jesus tonight. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reckon.
reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. When angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Son of righteousness, light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die, born to raise the sun. Second birth, the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King, glory to the newborn King, glory to the newborn King. Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Spiritual rebirth, right? You must be born again. And, uh, you know, I hope every person here has had that second rebirth, that you have been born again, not of the flesh, but of the spirit. Start walking with Jesus, right? Start living for him. Shine your lights for him everywhere you go in jesus name amen god bless you have a great night i want to wish you a